Hello, my name is Sam Felton and welcome to Expert Interviews on Smash the Fat. With me today, I have Keris and Matt from Fitter London and Fitter Food and authors of a new fantastic cookbook called The Paleo Primer. How are you doing, guys? Very well, thank you, Good, mate. Thank you. Fantastic to have you here. Um, so, um, what... Uh, what do you guys do with Fitter London and Fitter Food? Want to say this one? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, basically, we run uh, Fitter London as a training company, and we specialise in kettlebells. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. classes based in uh, central London, um, and we teach across the week. And then Fitter Food is the nutrition branch of what we do. Um, that's only been going for about the last 18 months, whereas Fitter London's about five years now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that came about because I went off and studied a nutritional therapy degree, and um, so we started doing some nutrition work with our members, and um, and sort of built fit of food from there. So yeah, that's it really. Fantastic. Um, and so, sort of what got you into the health and fitness industry to start off with? Uh, I mean, well, I, I, I've been in the industry uh, quite a bit longer than Keris. Um, I I pretty much left school and went straight into the whole. Uh, kind of fitness industry thing, you know, it was something I always wanted to do. So, I mean, I've been in the industry now for it's about 11, 12 years, actually. Jesus, that's gone quick. Um, <laughs> it flies to my mind, mate. <laughs> so, yeah, just started off as a, as a fitness instructor and then obviously worked my way up naturally to become a personal trainer. Um, so, always love training, training other people, be it one-to-one -one or group training. And But then in the last kind of like... Uh, three or four years, you know, that was when I actually started to really transfer over into the nutritional side of things because, you know, as you know, there's only so much you can do, you know, in the gym and with exercise and, you know, I started to have a few health issues myself. So naturally kind of weaned over to nutrition and food and that's just, it changed my life, you know, without exaggerating and it was something I really wanted to, to share with everybody else, hence the fit of food and the book. So... That's fantastic. That's fantastic because that, that's quite a common theme for people is that they do have health issues despite doing plenty of exercise yeah. and yeah. things like that. But you know, food is what makes us who we are, really. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, it's called the Paleo Primer, and obviously, it's taking the lead of um, of the Paleo diet. So, for those that don't know, what is the Paleo diet? <laughs> well, basically, paleo diet involves eating. Um, yeah, I'm sweat. I've just come back from a run, so I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to like, ugh. Um, yeah, basically, um, I hope you can't see that. Um, the paleo diet is eating the foods that we ate um, thousands and thousands of years ago before the food industry came about. So basically, it was anything um, that can be grown in the ground, grown on a tree, or had a face, or swam in the sea. So that's meat, fish, poultry, eggs, vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, and fruits. And uh, yeah, we first came across it, um, a friend of ours in the gym just mentioned it and we bought a few books, read up on it and uh, we just saw instant changes in, in sort of our energy and, and health and skin and even our training. So, um, but it's been refined over the years, um, I'm sure you know, so that you've also got now Primal where they've introduced, um, talk about dairy a lot and the benefits of having dairy in your diet. And uh, more recently you've got some people who've started to add starches to the to paleo diet and say that, you know, if you're exercising a lot, you can have safe starches. So in the book, we covered all of that. We sort of said, let's talk about a bit of dairy and let's also look at starches and which ones are the safer ones to have, like rice and, um, and um, starchy vegetables. So, yeah, we sort of gave our own little take on it, just collating everything we'd read over the years. Fantastic. Because... Um, one of the big things in the paleo diet is the removal of sugar grains and legumes. Um, now, for a lot of people, that's the end of the world, isn't it? <laughs> um, but but, but it, 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 can you quickly explain to us why why it isn't the end of the world, and that you know there's a hell of a lot more variation out there than just just those three groups? Okay. Yeah, well, I think. Um... You know what we tried to do with the the dishes was as you know we need we wanted to use as fewer ingredients as possible, but we wanted to make sure that there was loads and loads of flavour, you know, through like herbs and spices and things like that. And I think so long as people are enjoying what they're eating, then they're not going to miss those things too much. I mean, you know, things with dairy. I mean, dairy is a bit of a, a, a funny area because we actually have 
we have dairy in some of our in some of our recipes. Um, we don't recommend it to everyone. I mean, it does depend on the individual, but you know, we always push people towards like really good quality dairy. You know, be it uh, unpasteurized cheeses, raw milk, raw cream, etc. Butter from grass-fed cows. But um, I think it's not the end of the world so long as you are still enjoying you know each meal that you have so you can make some really nice curries you can make some fantastic vegetable stir fries you know lots of really tasty marinades without the use of things like legumes loads of dairy and and, and things like that so i think if you can train and change should i say people's kind of mindset into what they think of when they think of you know like a nice well balanced meal then i think you, you you've you've cracked it I think also when, when people, I mean breakfast is the hardest one and that was always our biggest battle with clients, um, but people are so indoctrinated into believing it's cereal or it's toast, so, um, but what we sort of said was just try an omelette every other day or just once a week and in instantly you'll notice you're not hungry for hours, so that was the first thing that appealed to a lot of people. Um, and so they would sort of swap more egg based breakfast for cereal based and then you know for some people it's step change um, so they just do it very very slowly and the more pressure you put on them the less likely they are to do it so we sort of learned about doing that didn't we stepping yeah. back a little bit and just saying every over the weekend just try a different breakfast when you've got a bit more time um, and I think when they start to experience the benefit they start to forget about sort of cravings for bread and um, some do, not all do. <laughs> but, yeah. And 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 that also the book is about showing them healthier alternatives and how exciting they are. So um, hopefully we've done that with a lot of people, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, again, I I looked looked at the book. Uh, briefly and um, you got some great chapter titles in the recipe section like how to pimp a salad um, mm -hmm. and, and paleo comfort food as well because um, there, there, there are a million and one things that you can do with what is in a, in a paleo or primal diet um, so could you could you give us a couple of examples of, of how to pimp a salad and some paleo comfort food Shall I go for this one? Yeah. Well, I think things with salads, I mean, you know, people just assume that all salads should be green, you know, like you can't add any other colour to a salad, but, you know, we, we don't believe in that, you know, we, we add, um, we make croutons from like roasted vegetables that we cut into really small chunks and bake them in the oven, so they go a little bit crispy, we top a salad with that, uh, we like to add lots of colour through like adding grated carrot, beetroot, you know, that, that that's a great thing to add to a salad, but... One of our favourite things to add to a salad that just makes it taste amazing is toasted nuts. We we like roast walnuts, pecans, maybe some cashews, macadamias. Roast them in the oven on a really low heat, but for a long time, so they go nice and crunchy. Sprinkle those over the top of a salad with a little bit of olive oil, and it just transforms the salad. And cheese always goes down well on a salad, doesn't it? I was laughing because I thought <laughs> he was going to say bacon. I thought he's going to say bacon. Well, always put bacon on your salad. And bacon. So it's not even really a That's salad. A <laughs> That's in all my salads. <laughs> cheese and bacon. bacon is always a winner. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, cheese. Um, and another thing that I was just talking about before um, is that uh, people feel like, you know, there isn't enough sweet stuff or, or comfort food um, with with a paleo diet. Um, but as, as we mentioned before, you've got paleo comfort food in there. What What sort of comfort food do you guys eat? Um, well, a lot of the desserts sort of came from my mum because every time um, we would go and visit our parents, they'd always try and get you back on the bread and the cakes and the pastries. Um, and I just kept refusing. So my mum sort of had no choice other than to start adapting her meals, like, you know, the nice cakes and stuff, and making them with nuts and, and butter and, and honey instead. So, um, yeah, a lot of those recipes for cakes and things came from that. Um, and we do enjoy that, don't we? That's yeah. sort, of, sort of our treat at the weekend. Um, and then also changing like our, you know, our favourite dishes like shepherd's pie and using cauliflower or sweet potato as a topping. That's just more about getting more vitamins and minerals into it as well. So you don't feel like it's, you know, I mean, we don't sort of feel guilty that much about eating anything because we always make sure it's really, really nutritious. And and actually, you know, when you are putting things like butter and and really good fats in there, it just feels like everything feels like a comfort food, really, doesn't yeah. it? So. <laughs> Yeah. But, but it's funny because um, even though obviously it's called paleo comfort foods, you know, when what, what I find funny is when people buy the book, the first recipe they always try is from the paleo comfort food section. They yeah. go they go straight <laughs> to the dessert, uh, which is fine. And you know, and 
compared to what they'd normally have as a as a as a dessert, I'm sure it's a substantially better. But um, you know, even though you know we 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 say it's a paleo comfort food, we we still say you know it's not something you have every day of the week. You know, it's still still should be had as like a little bit of a treat at the weekend or maybe as a bit of a midweek little treat, whatever it may be, you know. So same goes for regular treats, not every day. Absolutely, because because another section that you've got in the recipes um, is cheats of champions. Um, so what sort of cheats do you guys have and how often as well? <laughs> paleo or non-paleo? <laughs> yeah. uh, probably things like the... Um, Cashew, uh, coconut cashew fudge and chocolate mm. macadamias. They were me because I used to love um, peanut M and M's. Used to love. Oh, I still do love still them. Love. I try not to eat them, and I have like the chocolate macadamias instead. Um, and probably usually like once or twice a week we'd have that. Um, just you know, if we're just watching a film or something, wouldn't we? Mm. Um, like I say when you've got like um, when you get more into the cooking side, there's so much you want to try out that you just it's almost like you don't have time to keep going back to some of those old recipes so yeah we're always trying new stuff aren't we so yeah what would yours be yeah well I'd agree with you on the, the cashew fudge but uh, we, we actually there's there's a recipe that um, that we put up on our site recently which was actually made after the book went out which was a, uh, a chocolate orange cake which has by far been our most popular recipe uh, and it does taste absolutely amazing it's and it's one of those cakes that, you know, if you're going to make it, make it when you know you're going to have a lot of people coming round because otherwise you will eat the whole lot. It's really, <laughs> it's really hard to stop. You can freeze it. <laughs> yeah, quite it is quite easily done. <laughs> Go on, Kara, sorry. Go on. You can freeze a lot of the cakes, which I, I often say to clients, so you can have your cake and then eat it and then freeze it. <laughs> but I've eaten it frozen. It's still quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, now, um, there's sort of a range of um, of times on on the recipe. Some of them are really quick, but some of them do require um, a little bit of time and effort. Um, now, uh, what are your really quick and easy recipes that that you guys um, have yourself when you don't have very much time? Well, for me, I mean, if if it's been like a long day at work and I just want to knock something up really quick, I just go for an omelette. You know, because omelette, you know, you're still getting plenty of nutritional value there from the eggs, and you can quite simply whack whatever you want inside an omelette, be it a little bit of a, a little bit of goat's cheese, spinach, some smoked salmon, uh, maybe some leftover meat or vegetables from other meals that you've made. So yeah, for me, it's definitely uh, a version of an omelette, I'd say. Mine would be the, um, uh, it's, I think it was called, I'm trying to remember the name of the recipe now, we call it coconut prawn supper, was it? No, garlic prawn supper. Which oh, yeah. is basically just prawns and tomato puree with coconut oil and a little bit of um, creamed coconut grated in at the last minute. And that was always my literally got in really hungry. It takes less than five minutes to make it. So, and you didn't even want to put that in, did you? But it's been really popular. So, yeah, it, it took us a while to get a decent picture of that one. It, 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 it didn't look the most appetising, but it did taste good. Yeah. It did. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, now you've got um, a paleo shopping list on there, which I think is really, really useful for people because that's that's often um, a, a stumbling block for people. Sort of, you know, what what do I buy in the shop um, and everything like that. So, um, and another thing that is often um, accused of healthy eating is that it's really expensive. Um, so, you know what. What would you say to people that say healthy eating is expensive? Uh, well, I, there's numerous things I would say. I mean, a lot of people only go as far as the supermarket to, to buy ingredients. And the truth is, if you do go to a supermarket and you're, you, you go to the organic section or the free range, whatever it may be, it is expensive. Um, but, you know, we know that everything that you buy doesn't need to be organic. It's a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a con. Some things certainly we, we advise to be organic. Other things they don't need to be. And we, we always uh, send people to, to the website to check out the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen when it comes to what to buy organic and what not. But um, we, we always go to the butchers to get our meat and poultry. And we've done a few price comparisons. And actually, our butchers works out cheaper. Uh, people assume that you go to the butchers, it's going to be more expensive. But it's, it's, it's not the case. Uh, 
our butchers as well because we're regulars you know we get a little bit of a discount he gives us a few freebies here and there so that's a, another good reason why you should kind of make the effort once a week to get to the butchers and, and stock up because they, they will look after you because they they appreciate your custom uh, plus on, on the other hand a lot of people that that we deal with like a lot of our clients who say it's too expensive to eat healthy you know are more than happy to spend 60 70 pounds a week on alcohol uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, even you, more in London now. It, 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 yeah. Exactly, you know. So for me, it's a little bit of a you know weighing up your priorities. In that, you know, if you, if you can spend that kind of money on alcohol, then you know you should be more than happy to spend it on good food, which is obviously going to make sure that you thrive and feel pretty damn awesome every day. So, and also, I'd say like in the, I mean, I don't know in I suppose it's everywhere, but definitely in London, a lot of people use. Uh, I don't know if I can say places, but certain eateries that are on the high street, um, and they're really expensive. And for what you're getting, you know, half the time you eat lunch from you know a ready-made salad or a soup, and you're still hungry. So they end up snacking. So I actually think if you sat down and and properly priced it all out, it does work out cheaper this way. And things like tinned fish, we always say that's absolutely fine. It's really nutritious. Um, you know, the frozen section, frozen fish is cheaper as well. Not that we've had much success, but organ meats are really cheap, and you know, mm. if we can just get people eating more of them, they're really nutritious. So it doesn't have to be that expensive. And also, cheaper cuts of steak uh, are the most nutritious. So um, sometimes it's just about re-educating people about what really, you know, which is the most nutritious foods to eat. So and, and also just just urging them to cook for themselves as much yeah. as they can, because you know we we very rarely eat out, especially during the week. You know, the weekends we may you know, go to one of our, like, favorite restaurants. But, you know, if you're cooking your own food and, you know, you don't go crazy and eat, eat more than you actually need, then it, it it's not expensive at all. And like Kerry said, the whole organ meat thing, I mean, for us, like, you know, we love liver, which is very fortunate because it's really cheap, highly nutritious, but it's been one of our hardest tasks yet is trying to convert people onto organ meats, but we're still working on that one. It's it's pretty tough going, I know, because um, well, tripe used to be one of the biggest sellers in the country. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not anymore, unfortunately. People have sort of you know become adverse to to thinking of meat as being from an animal for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm sure like with with paleo, primal, um, and you know LCHF style diets. Um, that you know, people are going to start to overcome those um, those adverse opinions and things yeah. like that. And yeah, we'll, we'll start to be the whole animal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. Yeah, I see. And it's it's more sustainable for the planet if we do actually use the whole animal as well instead of throwing it away or anything like that. So yeah. it's sort of a sort of a win-win, really, isn't it? Uh -huh. um, so. <laughs> So, um, what I want to get down to is what does your daily diet look like? Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Um, okay, well, um, we wake up really early, like um, 5 a.m. normally, although he started getting up at 4 a.m. recently. I don't know why. It's a good time. Um, so, we get up really early, and I, ne I never want to eat immediately when I get up, so I've started having. Um, have you ever had bulletproof coffee? Do you drink that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 now and again, yeah. So I have that when I first wake up, um, and that normally keeps me going while I just clear my emails and stuff. And then I tend to get hungry, um, sort of a couple of hours after. And so it'll be things like um, uh, I love poached eggs, so poached eggs and sardines or salmon. Um, do you know what? It's usually leftovers from dinner before we have for breakfast, don't we? Yeah. Um, and normally whatever I'm having times it by six, and that's what he's having. So basically, <laughs> it's <a tiny> pile. <laughs> um, and yeah, we tend to eat um, more or less, I try and eat sort of every four or five hours if I can. Um, and again, it's just because uh, it's summer, we're doing massive salads at the moment. We get down to Borough Market or the farmer's markets once a week, um, really suck up on all the, the green leafy veg that's in season and berries and things like that, don't we? Yeah. We'll snack on um, sort of raspberries and macadamia nuts, things like that. Um, and then our evening meals, well, we always have a, I'm sure everyone has this, a debate every day because he wants it to be meat and I always want it to be fish. Um, so if it's, if it's me cooking, it'll be something like Mighty Mackerel. That's one of my favorite recipes. And if it's you, it's always lamb, usually lamb or bacon. Uh, about a bit of surf and turf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, I suppose. I mean, I'm I'm always I'm always hungry the moment I wake up. So that breakfast is the very first thing that I do after brushing my teeth. So you know, like like Kerry said, we we more often not just have leftover dinner. You know, so you know, this morning, you know, we had some roasted venison uh, with a little bit of with a little bit of a salad and veg, which was which was my breakfast. Um, and then for lunch, uh, I had some lamb. <laughs> some lamb and cumin burgers again with a nice big leafy salad because it is surprisingly hot here in in London right now. Um, but I do try and have, or should I say, I strive to have uh, one fish dish a day. I don't always succeed, but it's certainly something I need to to work on and get my kind of omega threes down me. So no doubt tonight will be some kind of grilled sardines along with some vegetables and some salad, etc. But uh, he did have a he had a challenge to do one veggie meal um, yeah. a day, and he lasted about three days. That was just one <laughs> one veggie meal a day. It's it, it's tough for us big guys, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like the plate was empty without me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, you know, I did. I cooked up a. What I would do is I'd cook a really big vegetable curry, because uh, I love curries. So I just whacked you know as much veg in there as I could. You know, so carrots, aubergines, onions, tomatoes. Um, a few green uh, green veg as well, uh, some sweet potato, and just whacked a load of spices in, and it tastes nice. And I, but I just I just love meat, you know, I love meat, and it's it's just it's really difficult because I found that after eating a vegetable dish, I I would still feel hungry, and I, that was the biggest thing for me is that I felt like I just needed a little protein hit with it in order to to kind of you know feel satisfied. But yeah, I'm working on it. Ah, it's all good. It's all good in the hood. Uh, now we've got a couple of questions um, on Facebook. Uh, yeah. First one is from Claire Winness um, from Abu Dhabi, um, who says Paleo has become very popular, especially with the younger generation. Do you think it's as suitable for older, more sedentary people? Um, I would say. More absolutely. In fact, even more so because um, basically we've we've got our parents on it because they're the generation that have had um, probably since you know the last 20 years they're in a higher risk phase of their life in terms of inflammatory conditions like heart disease and cancer, and yet they're the ones that have switched to margarine and low-fat spreads and you know got this big fear of fats now. Um, and been doing sort of, you know, really sort of high sugar, high carbohydrate diets without even realizing it. They're all eating all bran and, um, you know, whole, you know, wholemeal bread and things like that. And they've really moved away from the diets they were brought up on. Um, so I actually think their need is greater. And all it all it involves is just adapting, um, you know, carbohydrate intake a little bit. Um, but actually, what we found is um, when our parents have done it, and I've had lots of clients who've got their parents the book and got them on it as well. Um, they tend to get better results than, than sometimes people in their 20s and 30s because they just get on with it and they're like, oh yeah, okay, butter's back on the menu. Yeah, we used to eat liver, used to have bacon, we'll have a few new potatoes with dinner. They just simplify it. They don't overcomplicate it too much and just do it. And you know, we've had lo loads of feedback saying that they have just the weight's just fallen off them and they've brought it for their friends who've asked why they've lost so much weight. Um, and my advice is always. Um, you know, to friends, parents, and to my parents has always been just keep moving. So just keep walking, just keep getting out. You know, it doesn't have to be the gym. Um, you know, just keep doing something every single day. So you're just burning off your carbohydrates, and and you should be okay. So I mean, my mum is a kind of like a perfect example because, you know, I love my mum to bits, but she she's incredibly sedentary, isn't she? Yeah. You know, she uh, she's never been into gym. You know, she she doesn't walk somewhere unless she needs to. You know, uh, she's not lazy. You know, she's she's always been a hard worker, but you know, she's she she is pretty sedentary. And um, she, we gave her a copy of our book when it released here in the UK in January. And uh, she wanted to get her blood pressure down because her blood pressure was quite high, and the doctors wanted to put her on tablets, and we didn't want her to go on them. So we just said, replace your breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a recipe from the book, and you know, we'll keep tabs on your blood pressure and. In eight weeks, her blood pressure came right down, and she lost uh, just under two stone in weight. Um, which, and that was for someone who does zero activity. You know, she gets up, does a little bit of housework, goes to work, comes back, and then watches TV for the evening. So, 
you mentioned in the question, you know, for people that lead a more sedentary lifestyle, you know, you couldn't really get more sedentary than my mum and <laughs> it worked for her, so. <laughs> That's fantastic, that's fantastic. Uh, now, second question uh, is from Claire Parker, who asks, when eating paleo, do calories count when trying to lose weight? Yeah, they, they, they definitely do. I mean, what, what we tend to do is, is steer people away from the whole counting calories and, um, you know, I, I tend to say maybe use some of the software like um, Fitness Pal to check sort of what percentage is coming from fat, what's coming from protein, what's coming from carbs every now and then. Um, but move away from the counting calories. It gets a little bit obsessive. It doesn't really do you many favors. Um, and just start looking at your plate again and saying, right, I've got a piece of protein, I've got some veg there, and I've got this size serving of carbs. Um, you know, people have forgot to keep it simple, and that's how we used to, you know, sort of measure what we were eating. And um, but at the same time, when some people go on the paleo diet, they try and replace things like bread with paleo breads and paleo cakes, like some of our cakes in the book. And um, some of them are pretty calorific, as you've seen. And and some of the coconut milk dishes, like the curries, um, you know, if you were sort of having a lot of that, you could tip the balance initially. So. I tend to say to just steer away from the sort of um, um, the comfort foods initially and just get used to getting your appetite under control and, and getting regular portions and you know not too much measuring just look and, and see how you feel after a meal um, but yeah we definitely we did make that mistake initially I think I was definitely in as you can see from the book way too many nuts um, which is why we put that chapter in yeah. and our clients have done the same so you can tip that balance um, quite easily can't you? Oh, absolutely yeah but we, 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 try to, we, we try to get people to avoid calorie counting because we, we don't believe that, you know, eating should be this chore. this chore that you have to calculate and add, add meals together and whatnot. We just try and educate people on, you know, what is good food, what is real food, and just to make sure that when they eat, they only eat till they're about 80% full so they're not stuffing their faces because, you know, bananas are great for you, 10 bananas, you know, that's too much. So it's just getting people to just enjoy the food that they're eating, not feeling stuffed, you know, leaving enough time in between meals and and just knowing what's what, what are the good guys and what are the bad guys, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Wise words. Um, so uh, the final question from uh, from Twitter, from Matt, uh, he asked about being an indicative male, um, what should my daily grams be of fat, carbs and protein in a maintenance phase? Um, well basically I would say um, when I work with guys that are in the gym um, I sort of say start off by hitting your protein goal which um, generally is around two grams of, um, per kilo of body weight so whatever his weight is just um, times that by two and then after that um, really in terms of the carbohydrates it's all about what training he's doing so I'd have to ask whatever he's doing and just make sure he's getting in sort of 30 grams of carbohydrates post-workout um, and probably start around 150 grams to 100 grams of carbohydrates a day. I'm assuming if he's in a maintenance phase he sounds like he's going to the gym um, quite a bit. So yeah I'd say start around 100, 150 and it's, it's a bit of an experiment from there and um, this is purely anecdotal, but most men seem to do better on a higher fat model with like 60 and some guys up to 80% of their calories coming from fat. Um, and then women tend to be more better on slightly higher carbohydrate um, and I'm sure the mechanism there is to do with hormones and thyroid and, um, and probably digestion as well. And women do better on um, fish-based proteins and seafood and men tend to do better on um, red meat. And again, I think that's more down to stress levels of men versus women and digestion and things like that so and the omega-3s which women need a little bit more so um, I would start with the protein uh, play around with the carbs there's some really um, I mean all the sort of primal books give you some advice on, on where to put them pre and post workout and um, try it but everyone is so unique there is no one formula and if we knew that then we'd be living in the Bahamas now and sat on a boat <laughs> doing this interview because <laughs> we found the magic formula and sold it I think I think that's uh, the other big thing is getting people to actually make the conscious effort to listen to their bodies. You yeah. know, I mean, if you don't feel as it, that you're fueled when you're training, then you know that that's a sign something's up. You know, and and the thing is as well is some some days it differs. You know, I can 
you know, if I have quite a lot of carbohydrates with my dinner, for example, and then have a protein fat-based breakfast in the morning before I train, more often than not, I feel really, really good for that. I have plenty of energy and, you know, I'll have a really good workout. Whereas just some mornings I wake up and I just know I just need a few carbs with my breakfast. You know, it's just, I can just tell, you know, and it's, it's not easy to get to that point. But, you know, when you've trained as long as we have and, and whatnot, and you kind of like play around with different kind of macros with your meals. You you just you just know when your body needs something, you know. And you know it doesn't have to be a lot of carbohydrates, you know. Like you might just have like a really small portion of sweet potato, or uh, maybe even a little bit of white rice, or something like that, just to kind of give you that little bit of carb to kind of get you through your workout. Because there's no point, obviously, training, you know, if you don't feel fueled, if you don't feel good, if you don't feel ready for the workout. I mean, we all have our off days, but most of the time you should feel, you know, raring to go. So, yeah, just listen to the body and just give it what it needs without going overboard. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, thank you so much uh, for, for the interview, guys. Really appreciate your time. It's a, it's a really good book. I really love the look of it. It's sort of like a uh, A4 pad and like it's sort of been scribbled or something like that, um, which is absolutely fantastic. got a real sort of homely feel about it. It's really, really nice. Um, now, it's all available on Amazon. Uh, if people in the UK want to head over to Amazon, if you go to smashthefat.com forward slash paleo UK, and for those of you in the US, if you go to smashthefat.com forward slash paleo US, that will take you straight to the book where you can buy it on Amazon there. Um, now, where can people find out more information about you guys? Well, we're, uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we're, we're a bit more proactive on Facebook than we are Twitter because I haven't quite worked that one out yet. But, uh, yeah, so we're on Facebook we are Fitter Food. Uh, Fitter London's also on there as well. So Fitter London's more uh, tailored towards, you know, training and, and things like that. Fitter Food is the kind of nutritional health, well-being side of it. Um, we're on Twitter as well. So it's Fitter, at Fitter underscore food. Uh, yeah, so if people want to just kind of stay up to date with like our latest blogs, recipes, um, video blogs, things like that, then yeah, definitely give us a, a follow and, and like our page. Fantastic, fantastic. And your website as well is fitterlondon.co.uk as well, isn't it? Yeah. That's correct, yeah. We've, um, we, we, the, the actual the recipes are on our Fitter London site. Uh, we're just constructing the, the Fitter Food website uh, as we speak. So that should be up within the next uh, month or so if everything goes to plan. And um, what URL will that be at? That would just be fitterfood.com. Perfect, perfect. Well, thanks again, guys, for, for your time today. I urge everybody to go take a look over on, on Amazon for the Paleo Primer, uh, absolutely fantastic book that will see you well on your way to, to losing fat and being healthy um so yeah thanks again guys and i'll uh, i'll speak to you soon awesome thank, thank you for you. having us thanks for having us no worries guys take it easy cheers